Click the first link in the description for the best Ask Reddit content. Today I fucked up by thinking I was late to work. This is more embarrassment than anything, but one of my fears is doing something embarrassing. I'm regularly late to work, no idea how I haven't gotten fired yet, even my manager joins in on the late to work jokes. Why am I late? I have to get up at 7 am, I don't usually fall asleep till around 3 to 4 am. I don't want my free time to end so I fuck myself over by doing this. I woke up at 8 16, 16 minutes after I was supposed to be at work. I thought shit, texted my supervisor that I overslept, again, hop in the shower, get out, grab my keys, then rush out the door. All in the span of about 10 to 15 minutes. I pull into work nobody there. Weird. So I go into the side entrance we use, locked, so I unlock it and make my way in. Nobody is there. I check my phone and realize it's Friday. We have the entire weekend off. I do the walk of shame back to my car and go back home. I wake up around 1pm to texts from all my co-workers and manager laughing at what I did. They even have me coming in on camera, the text, and the footage of me walking with my head down back to my car. I seriously considered quitting for a second because I don't wanna show my dumbass face on Monday. Too long didn't read, rushed into work on my day off. Everybody at work now has footage of my FU. Better to be late on your day off than not show up on a day you work. I've done this. This is the byproduct of being a workaholic. Priceless. Now, start going to bed earlier. Good luck. You do deserve every bit of what they gave you. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Don't sweat it, I'm sure they're laughing with you, not at you. Enjoy your weekend. I used to work at a golf course and we had to be there at 4am every morning and if there was a tournament or event going on over the weekend we'd have to come in at 3 to get the course presentable. I was late I don't know how many times and would wake up thinking I overslept on a tournament day just to drive there and realize I was an hour early. The earlier the day starts the more I fork it up lol. Today I fucked up by eating the big burger. This is actually a running today I fucked up, as it's happened numerous times until I realized it today. A short while back I was gifted some meat due to the concern about a possible meat shortage here in the U.S. Kansas City Steak Company steaks and burgers. I threw them in the freezer to keep. As burger cravings came, I'd make myself a burger. The burgers were wrapped in individual packages and they were huge. Now normally, I like to pan cook my burgers. This took a while with these as they were enormous, about an inch thick frozen. It was time consuming, but they were worth it and tasted great. Had maybe five or so over the course of a month. However today, I was in more of a rush to eat. Broke out the foreman grill to speed up the process. Threw a burger on and walked away. I returned to check on the burger. Opened the grill. The top half of the burger stuck to the top plate of the foreman. On the bottom, was the other half, with a sheet of paper greasily bubbling on the top. I had been cooking the paper into the burgers the whole time, and eating it. Too long didn't read. Have been eating two burgers with paper sandwiched in between thinking it was a single large burger. That's one way to get fiber. I was in fear while reading this. I was afraid you were eating something vile the whole time. Well, not a major today I fucked up, but a funny one all the same. No lasting harm, and we get to poke fun at op. Way to eat paper. I ate the core of a caramel apple one time, including the stick. You got nothing to be ashamed of. 69 upvotes. Today I fucked up by being kind to my puppy. This was 8 years ago. My family had just brought our new puppy home. He seemed to be the quiet curious type. All was going well until at night my parents decided to put the new puppy in a kennel to sleep in. He started crying out loud and wouldn't stop for the next few hours. My parents told me not to let him out because it was important that he got used to the kennel, as his curious nature, combined with the fact that he was a puppy, made him pretty untrustworthy. 
trustworthy, they didn't want him to destroy anything while we were asleep which is fair I suppose. He kept crying out all night and I felt very bad for him. I imagined how scared he must feel, being locked in a cage away from his siblings. Being a foolish 10 year old boy I decided to ignore my parents wishes and let him out. He rushed into my arms almost instantly and wouldn't leave my side. I decided to let him sleep with me in the living room. Big mistake. First of all he totally woke up in the middle of the night and pissed on everything, and I mean everything. It was as if he got up and just took a stroll around the house while pissing. The trail went on in loops around the living room and down the hallway. Also he took a fat steaming shit in the hallway, which got me grounded for a month. But more importantly, now he's an 80 pounds dog that still, to this day, will not go to sleep without me. He sleeps in my bed and his favorite spot is, of course, my spot. He also heats up half of the bed making it almost unbearably hot some nights. I'm one of those people that can only sleep when it's cold. He sleeps like a hibernating bear meanwhile I rarely get a good night's rest. I've tried letting him have the bed entirely but if I move he will follow me. So it's not the bed, it's me. He just loves me that much I guess. Which is both very sweet and extremely infuriating. My parents even say that when I'm not at home for the night he seems depressed. But to be honest he's so happy that I think it's better this way. He won't leave my side, but in the end I'm fine with that. Even if I don't get good sleep anymore. Too long didn't read. I let my puppy go to sleep with me because he seemed scared all by himself. He pissed all over the living room, got me grounded, and now he will only sleep next to me at night. Nowhere else. Which is annoying because this dude heats up he whole bed and takes my spot. You become responsible, forever, for what you have tamed. On Twan de Saint Exupéry. That's sweet, it may be hard to sleep, but still sweet. Wouldn't have it any other way. This reminds me of when we brought my pup home 10 years ago. My parents put him in the kennel for the night. It was in the hallway right outside my sister's and my room. He cried so much and eventually I couldn't take it and I laid down next to the kennel, put my hand in through the bars to stroke him, and we both fell asleep like that. My parents let me sleep on the floor like that every night for two weeks until they finally relented and let him sleep in my bed. Hasn't slept anywhere else since smiley face. My parents still kept him in the kennel when we left the house for the first year and a half. Funny enough we don't know how but he actually managed to unlock his kennel once or twice. It was a simple lock where you just flip it up and then pull. He probably just reached his claw through and copied the movement, but I didn't think a dog would actually have the dexterity to pull that off lol. This is so sweet. Cool on though it really grinds my gears when people think that putting a puppy in a kennel all alone right away won't screw them up somehow. Best would be to put the cage slash kennel in one of the bedrooms, just to make them feel safer. And then slowly moving it little by little to the area you want them to stay. But the bond you created with your pup from that night on is invaluable. 3. I kenneled my beloved star early on but I put the kennel door facing the wall right next to where I sleep and hung my hand on off the bed laced in the door until she settled down. When I got to where I could trust her not to do stupid puppy shit at night I scooted the kennel down and left the door open. She went through a phase of sleeping right next to me to now she sleeps all over the house as is her desire. I've had a lot of partner dogs, my philosophy is you don't own them as much as partner with them, but she is by far the best ever. She's full of piss and vinegar but she'll flip and be sweet. When I've gotten sick she lays on the bed with me and will not leave my side until I feel better. So is it trained now or still pisses all over? Oh no he still pisses, but only on me. It's our bedtime ritual. Hashtag dog tax. 